Hi, I'm Newton Chatta with DLA Public Affairs, and this is the DLA Wrap. This is your opportunity to get to know DLA people and DLA initiatives on a more personal level. Today, my special guest is Command Sergeant Major Tamika O'Neill. Hi, Command Sergeant Major, how are you today? I am good, Newton, how are you? So tell me, how long have you been with DLA? I came on board August of 2020, right in the midst of COVID. And at that point in time, it wasn't a lot of personnel around. It was just me, the boss, and the primary staff, and so forth. So when you came to DLA, how much did you know about the agency, and what was your first impression? Everyone knows what DLA stands for. They know it's the Defense Logistics Agency. But when you start to pull back the onion on what the agency does, even I was mesmerized at the large scale and scope of the mission of this agency in support of the nation, DOD, our war fighters, other governmental agencies. It's just amazing. And when did you meet uh, Vice Admiral Skubik and your first impression? We did not get to meet until I came on board in August of 2020. She's very people first, everybody's voice matters. I was like, this is going to be an awesome assignment. So you and Vice Admiral Skubik were first female leaders here at DLA at the, at the top. Talk to me about that, what was, yeah. what's that been like? Yeah. Can you imagine 60 years of this agency's existence? There's never been female leadership in this type of role. So from that aspect, it has been historic, but it has also been challenging along the way. And that's not to say just because we are female leaders. Any type of leader in a, a, a agency or an organization this size with a mission so broad to take care of DOD, the nation, our war fighters, it is a huge you know, undertaking and it has been a wonderful experience to share it with Vice Admiral Skubik. What has your role been? The role of what I do is always taking care of not only civilians, mm -hmm. our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our Marines, and our guardians. It is a compilation of what I bring to the table. And I look out for the health, the welfare, the safety, the discipline, just making sure those things are staying in line. How are you able to connect to the workforce that you couldn't see in person? We did a lot of virtual. So during those virtuals, I would just pay attention to who's speaking, who's briefing, where they're from. And then I go and I try and ask a little bit more about their backgrounds. Or if I found something that was quite interesting about them, I would personally send them an email just to say, hey, that was a great brief you just gave the boss. You know, that was my way of reaching out saying, you know, I might not get out to see a lot of you in person, but I want you to know that I'm paying attention. What's your message to the DLA workforce? I want them to know not only from the senior mission command level, from the director level, I want this message to permeate all the way down to the lowest level. Those 8,000, 9,000 members of our workforce that worked continuously during COVID. They had to be at the front, the tip of the spear, continuing to move supplies across the world, across the nation, and so forth. So I always try to convey that I appreciate wholeheartedly what we do as an agency and what the civilian workforce does in support of the warfighter always. Do you have a special message for DLA reservists? There's only 500 or so active duty, mm -hmm. and that support from the reserve component, when we can call upon them to come on orders to go and deploy on a, a red cycle deployment team or a deployment support team. We can't ask for a better support element. It gives us flexibility to be as maneuverable across this space because logistics is global. Is there anything else you would like to say um, about your time here at DLA? I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the, the entire cleaning crew that kept us safe and healthy throughout COVID when we came on board. They kept the facilities in tip top, you know, cleanliness condition and so forth. I just like to thank the civilian workforce, the military workforce, our police department, because it just takes, it takes the whole community to make sure an agency stays operational and the conditions for the workforce remain safe uh, on a daily basis. 
I just could not have asked for a, a better job. And if I transition from the Army from this position, I will have been thankful to have had the window of opportunity to meet such great and extraordinary professionals these last three years. Well, thank you so much for your service to DLA. We are honored that you came and served with us and supported the entire workforce, so thank you. You're most welcome. And thank you for joining us on the DLA Wrap.